Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another round of office uh, hours speed round where I'm going to go through and answer a whole bunch of questions that don't really need in-depth answers. First up is unfortunately Postgres is cheaper asks, I know you've said that as far as you know, there isn't a Breno's R Postgres, but since you spend a lot of time with it, you must know quite a bit. So what are your learning resources? I've learned to specialize in a site called google.com. Over at google.com, you can ask all kinds of uh, questions and get interesting answers. And I know you're going to like that because your username says Postgres is cheaper. Wait till you go to google.com and find out how much a subscription to use it costs. You're absolutely going to love it. Next up, we have uh, Dade Preto says, Hi, Brent. Thanks for your amazing work. You're welcome. Uh, regarding 22 parameter sensitive plans filling up query store, Bob Ward replied to a comment saying that we have logic here not to cause too many plans to be cached. Any thoughts? Oh, sure. As long as they have logic, there's never been a bug in logic, has there? Moving on. Next up, Jacob asks, Hi Brent, what are your thoughts on the new Azure SQL Database Ledger feature? Do you think there's any future for blockchains in the database? Yes, uh, companies, uh, some companies need proof that a row hasn't been altered or at least an untrace, un unmodifiable history of who modified it when. And you don't really need blockchain in order to do that. You just need some way of a tamper-proof ledger. And that really is where that kind of thing makes a whole lot of sense. Next up, Suku22DBA asks, Hi Brent, performance tuning is something that will come based on experience. So I wonder if there's any site where we can get queries or mock scenarios and tune them to make them run faster. Oh, you mean like a website where you get assignments to do index tuning or query tuning or parameter sniffing or server tuning and you work on a lab vm maybe with a realistic database like the stack overflow database maybe it would even give you feedback from someone like a microsoft certified master who could tell you how you were doing on performance tuning and then after you go get to the end of a bunch of those exercises you can feel like you've mastered something oh it'd probably be really cool to sell them as like training classes so that they were all bundled up no i've never heard of anything like that moving on next up looking at procs all day asks hi brent i'm waiting on a manager app for bundle two i assume that, that means like the live class season pass type stuff um, what could explain a slow exponential deterioration of cpu and duration of certain procs that is reset every time my friend does a failover typically that's parameter sniffing because whenever you do a failover you're erasing sql servers execution plan cache do a search for sql server parameter sniffing and you'll find a ton of free resources too that's not a sales pitch for my training classes which of course i'm a big fan of but there are tons of free resources too out there on parameter sniffing that'll help you get started Next up, Shy asks, Hi Brent, for disaster recovery, when should I use log shipping versus always on availability groups? It's a great question. If you go to brenozar.com and click on scripts up at the top, you get my first responder kit. Inside there, there is an HA and DR worksheet that you go through with your business stakeholders, and that helps you figure out which one of those is right for you based on your budget, your high availability needs, your disaster recovery needs. So go to brenozar.com, click scripts up at the top, and go grab our first responder kit. Look at the HA and DR worksheet inside of there. Next up, we have Richard who says, if I duplicate a linked server connection except for the friendly name, have I doubled the capacity? No. Next up, Hybrid DBA says, could you mention any equivalent community contributor in Oracle like Brent is for SQL Server? Um, I actually don't follow Oracle at all. I've never worked with Oracle. The only person that I know in the Oracle world is that Jeff Smith on Twitter. Um, so if you're watching the YouTube video and you know a someone in the Oracle community who does open source work, free presentations, blogging, etc., other than that Jeff Smith, who's excellent, uh, list them down in the comments so that other people can find them. 
Next up, Theodore says, what is your opinion on cryptocurrencies? I know this isn't related to SQL Server, but I don't see where I can ask you anything non-related to SQL Server. Yes, Theodore, I can see how that would be challenging, because if you search for things like Brent Ozar Contact or Brent Ozar Email or Brent Ozar Twitter or pretty much any social media thing you can think of, it would be really hard to find me online. Now, having said that, I think cryptocurrencies are a lot like gambling tokens in an unregulated casino. There are all kinds of unregulated casinos you can go talk to, local mobsters, mafia members, people running a game down on the corner. And who knows whether or not those tokens are going to be worth anything within six months or a year, or if you're going to get shot for trying to turn them into cash. So I, I kind of think of them as just like gambling. I don't have a problem with gambling. I'm literally driving to Las Vegas tomorrow, and I will go gambling then. But of course, you just want to have an, an awareness of uh, what the risks are, whether or not things are regulated, or whether you're just flushing money down the toilet. Next up, we have Full Text Index asks, what's your opinion and experience? It, generally not very good. If you search on brenozar.com for full text indexes, I talk about why it doesn't perform very well. It says, my friend has put a full text index on an extended event session, capturing all of SQL statements on an instance. I get the feeling what your friend is doing there is he's just like groping around blindly in the dark. What your friend should do if he's trying to do query tuning is figure out how he can gather together which queries are using the most resources overall. And that would be something that you would do with SP Blitz Cache without adding any extra overhead to the server at all. Uh, next up, Carlos DBA asks, I just renewed my subscription for the classes for the third year. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's very awesome. This is any new courses that you're working on or planning to post in the next year that we can look forward to. Yes, but I tend not to announce them in advance just because if I get deep into building it and I decide I don't like it and I want to throw it away and start over and take another direction, I don't want to have sold you something that I don't end up shipping. My, uh, I was going to redo a DBA class, for example, last year, and I ended up just giving the whole thing away for free rather than doing it because I just didn't like database administration work anymore. Um, I will say that the track that I'm going down towards these days is much more around T-SQL and execution plan tuning, more courses down that road. Next up, Yonder asks, Hi, sir, do you think that frameworks like Entity Frameworks should integrate with partitioning, or should that be left to database administrators? I think if you're writing code, you shouldn't have to worry about how partitioning is done. Partitioning is really more for data warehouses that need to do things like sliding window loads. And in that case, you wouldn't build something like that with Entity Framework. You would tend to do that with raw T-SQL instead. So I don't see the point of exposing things like partitioning to Entity Framework, where those things are, t are aimed much more at a more traditional OLTP type environment. Next up, Trueshit asks, is it a good idea to connect tools like Power BI to SQL Server via direct query mode? So my thing is, is what you really want to ask is, are people needing to write reports and query the database? If they need to write reports, they're going to connect to the database, regardless whether it's Power BI or some old Crystal reports or Excel or whatever. If you want a separate server for reporting, by all means, go put it in. But I, I wouldn't tell people, no, direct query isn't allowed, because reporters are going to write reports. Next up, Kumaran asks, what would be the best practice or best method for uh, a query that spans two versions of SQL using a linked server? Don't. Connect to the database that has the data that you need. Your question is kind of like saying, hey Brent, I want to punch myself in the junk with both hands. What are the best practices for doing that? Don't do that. And if you're going to insist on punching yourself in the junk with both hands, you're not going to get great results. You're going to have a bad time. Some people are into that. Not particularly my thing. Performance is my life says. I have an SSIS package that's ELT and then logic to process. Is there a performance difference? Da, 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 da. I don't do SSIS at all. If you want, search for SSIS Andy Leonard. Andy is a very active community member who has a Twitch channel too as well. And he will be able to answer that kind of question there. 
Next up we have Tancredi says, Hi Brent, do you have any thoughts on using a pre-existing production SQL server for DPM? My friend's boss is pushing for it to save money on licensing. Yeah, the, the data backend of DPM is so lightweight. It's not like it's a heavy transactional app that's doing all kinds of heavy lifting. I would totally just use an existing production server for that as well. And then finally, we have Conzio SSJ4 asks, Hi Brent, I have many to many relations between a couple of tables. How should I design the relations between those two tables? For that, I'm going to give you a plug for a book that I haven't, I bought like last year and I meant to do a review on it and I just never got around to it. Uh, Pro SQL Server Relational Database Design and Implementation by Lewis Davidson, um, sixth edition. It's, you know, as you can see, it's thick boy right there. Uh, good book. I have uh, been meaning to do a review of it for quite a while, but I would totally recommend starting here because you're going to have a lot more questions that are down along the same route. So the, you'll get, you can pause the video and get a screenshot of that little one. All right, there we go. Looks like we're, what, 11 minutes in and we've tackled all kinds of questions. So hopefully that helps y'all and I will see y'all on the next Office Hours. Adios.